the Mythbusters are going to have a blast. The most common theory about what's going on in this reaction between the candy and the soda is what's called nucleation. Basically, the idea is that the surface of the candy is covered with microscopic pits and lots of more surface area than you can actually see. And each little pit, each little corner provides what's called a nucleation site or a place where a carbon dioxide bubble can form and escape. Look at a Mentos close up and it's like the surface of the moon. And that might be the candy key. Drop one in cola and every tiny crater provides a site where a CO2 molecule can change to gas. Because Mentos are so pitted, the theory is that millions of CO2 bubbles are formed in a very short space of time. And because the candy sinks and this rapid release of gas happens at the bottom of the cola, you get that famous fountain. To test this nucleation theory, they're going to start with a control. One regular mint Mentos dropped in soda water. And sure enough, it gets the bubbly party started. Now, to do a comparison. These two candies are made by the same manufacturer and, as far as I'm aware, even using the same process. But the colored version of this actually has a glazing over it. It's a wax coating or a sealer that inhibits the nucleation process that the other one achieves quite readily. The shiniest surface should lower the nucleation sites, meaning less of an immediate eruption. That's not doing anything more than the wall of the plastic bottle itself. Sure enough, with the smooth Mentos, there ain't no whiz with the fizz. The Mythbusters can say they finally cracked the case of the candy and cola cascade. 